Today we're gonna look at everything revolving around D Octane and Rocket League cars in Fortnite Creative. Everything from the basics to how to reset the car and how to create a race with the Octane or basically any other car in Fortnite Creative. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. You can place the Octane Spawner 32 times on the map. While not having an option to change the color in its device settings, the Octane can change the color if the driver is in a different team. The Octane is the exact copy of the Rocket League Octane, so it can do everything that the Octane can do in Rocket League as well. It can aerial, air roll and even technically flip reset if you had a ball in Fortnite Quaver which could do that. If you want to have a quick look into the settings of the device, all you have to do is click on the plate and use the customized Octane Spawner setting. In here you will be greeted with uh, the basic settings first. The first setting in the device is visible during game and this is only referring to the plate under the Octane, not the Octane itself. So if you turn this to off, it will basically turn off this plate, which is very helpful if you do not want to have this plate in your map. The next three settings under this are all related to the boost and are basically three different settings. We have generative, which means the boost refills by itself. We have standard, which is the standard Rocket League one where you have to pick up boost packs to actually gain boost. And we have the infinite one, which obviously gives you infinite boost forever. If we move over to the advanced setting by clicking on this icon over here, we get grid with a lot more settings. We have the enable during phase, which is a basic setting on Fortnite, which allows us to basically allow the device to spawn or spawn not. This actually includes the car and not only the plate. So pregame lobby only means the pregame lobby, gameplay only means gameplay, and if you turn it to off, then obviously it will not spawn whatsoever. Respawn time is pretty self-explanatory. Respawns the car when destroyed um, at that certain delay. So for example, if you have three seconds, the car only respawns in three seconds. Respawn vehicle will always respawn the vehicle if the vehicle is enabled. Destroy vehicle obviously then means the opposite. As soon as the car gets disabled, which means for example, that this setting is put to none, the car will get destroyed. The Octane health is pretty self-explanatory, however, it doesn't matter if you use Rocket League versus Rocket League cars and use a supersonic demolition, the car will always explode no matter which setting you put in here. So if you have 9999, the car will still explode as much as you, if you have it on 1. The only exception is obviously indestructible. The trick setting does not mean that you have more ability to have tricks to do air rolls or flip resets or whatever, it only means that you have a little Tony Hawk meter at the side which gives you like a little tricks score setting. Water destruction is pretty self-explanatory, obviously it only works with actual water. So if you use the water device and you don't want your car to explode as soon as it touches the water, then you should turn this to never. The last four settings are pretty self-explanatory, however it's yet again very important to understand that these only catch for other vehicles, such as the whiplash and other cars. It does not include the octane into octane. So if you use supersonic speed and still have all of these off, the car will still explode. Before we come to the channels and how to set up a map with the Octane, there's one more thing which is important to the Octane and that is the boosts. There's also a device for the Rocket Boost which only works on the Octane. It doesn't work for any other car in Fortnite Creative and um, there's basically three versions of the boost. There is the small boost which gives 12 boosts. There is the large boost, which gives basically full boost. And if you look into the device, there's also a custom option where you can basically set up your own settings for the boost. So if you only want to give 90 boost for whatever reason and have the respawn time to 20 seconds, you can do that. If you're wondering if there's a Rocket League ball in this game, as of the time that I'm recording this video, there's not. But there's a very high chance that the ball will be added to the game and will most likely be added to the ball spawner. You can also find the ball spawner in the devices category. The current ball doesn't work with the Octane and uh, the ball is very glitchy, so I would not recommend using it for anything. Um, but there should be a new option into the type section over here, which says Rocket League ball. Okay, so let's have a look at the channel settings of this device, which you can find by clicking this little, like, bell icon or whatever it is and uh, you will be greeted with a bunch of channels which are basically links between devices and for example the easiest link that you can do with the car and another device is spawning in a player into the car as soon as the player spawns into a map. For that we're going to use a player spawner so that is a spawn point for a player and we use the octane spawner. In the Octane Spawner, we have the option Assign Driver when receiving from. We can put that to a custom channel, which we, in our case, have channel 1 here. And if we look into the Player Spawn, we can also do the same thing. When a player spawns on this spawn pad over here, we can send a signal as well. That means as soon as we spawn, we get put into the car. So now if we go into our settings and start the game, we can see that we will spawn on the spawn pad. And as soon as the game started, we actually instantly spawn without pressing any buttons. 
And let's move on to the next option, which is respawn vehicle. This one is also very important if you have some kind of course or maybe if you're a race where maybe you can get off track and want the car just to reset at a certain point. You can do that with the respawn option. However, it is not as easy as you think. So in our example, we're gonna use the mutator zone to respawn the car. This is a great way to basically have like kind of zone where the car should not be or where the car can reset if you have a course or like an aerial course or something like that. Um, where you basically, if you fail the course, you can reset the car. So as soon as the player touches this with the car, the car gets reset. How we are doing this? This device as well has channels and on the player entering zone is the channel that we need here. So that means as soon as the player enters, we're gonna send on this channel over here. So in our case, it's channel three. Now you can see that we have the respawn vehicle when receiving from also on channel three. That means that the car responds perfectly fine, but we do not spawn within the vehicle. For that, we also need a channel on the ascent driver as we learned earlier. There is still one problem. If we just leave it like that, the car will respawn, but we will not because there is obviously no other channel which senses that we should be spawning in. We can put this to three, but this will not work in Fortnite Creative because there has to be a little delay so basically the car has to respawn first and then the driver has to be put back in. So for example, you can see that we drive off track and our car should respawn with us in the car. But as you can see, it does not work. The car respawns, but we are still here. So we have to fix that. All right, so to solve this little problem, we can assign a driver on a different channel. So for example, channel two. Then we're gonna pick up a trigger device. In the trigger device, we have to do following things. We have a delay from one second, so it basically triggers a little bit later. We're gonna have triggered when receiving from on the channel that we use on respawning our car. So if we jump in, this channel gets triggered over here and then sends a signal on the two, which then allows us to respawn in the car. All right, so for the test, I put the delay to 30 seconds so we can actually see how it works. So if we now drive our car off-road, the car gets respawned. We can see that the device is working, delaying it for three seconds and we spawn back into the car. Other settings in this channel section are pretty self-explanatory, such as enabling and disabling the device, which means basically you can use it or you can not use it. Destroying the vehicle will basically destroys the vehicle. And you can also send signals when something happens with the vehicle. So for example, you can send a signal when a player enters the vehicle. You can send a signal when someone exits the vehicle. For example, that is very helpful if you want no one to exit the vehicle. So for example, what you could do is if someone exits the vehicle, immediately assign them back to the vehicle. So that means so that means if I now go into this vehicle, I cannot exit it anymore. So you can see here, I'm pressing the button and I cannot exit it anymore. The reason for that is obviously because we set the settings. So every time someone leaves the vehicle, I'm gonna immediately get put back in. And now we come to a very basic version of how you can create a races or anything that has to do with checkpoints in Fortnite Creative. Okay, now we come to the last part where we basically create a simple race with the Octane. You can use everything that you used before. You can assign a player, you can make sure that the car respawns if it goes off track. And we can also use checkpoints and other stuff to respawn and make a race possible. In this scenario, as you can see, we do not respawn the car here, but we destroy the vehicle because we don't want the car to stand in the way if the car, for example, finishes the race. We can do that very simply by adding checkpoints. So this is our mini race here. We obviously have only two checkpoints. And in the first checkpoint, we basically do not have to do anything. But if we move to our last checkpoint, which is checkpoint two in our case here, we can scroll down and see when checkpoint is completed. That means when the race is completed, then we're gonna send a signal to channel five, which then destroys the car. We also have a mutator zone behind this. The reason for that is because as you remember, the car only gets destroyed and not the player. So if we want to send the player to a different area where, for example, you reach the game, or if you want to actually kill him to kind of say you're now in spectate mode, you have to send some signals. So same thing here, we're gonna use the mutator zone and when a player enters, um, we're gonna send a signal. Same channel here, so we teleport the player back to the teleporter back there. If we want the car to completely disappear from the track, so if it's like, for example, a looping race and you don't want the car to randomly stand around or to respawn somewhere in the map, then we need to have disable the car as well on channel five. And this is the part where the player gets teleported to if he finishes the race. This could be like a secret booth or some kind of like waiting for everybody to finish lobby. Um, we have just a simple teleporter with a channel when I teleport it on channel 5. All right, so and as you can see, we start the race. The race has started. We can now finish the race. We finish the race. We get teleported back. The car doesn't respawn. And we are now in our we finish the race booth. And this is how you can use the Octane in Fortnite Creative and use it in combination with other devices. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And I will see you guys back in the next one.